Alright, this video describes the installation process for the water level sensor that we use in our remote monitoring package, which we call SatWater. Um, here with me is an OTT PLS weld up sensor, which we are calling the water level sensor. Um, I'm going to briefly describe what you receive when you receive a weld up sensor package or water level sensor package. So um, here we have the weld up sensor cable. Um, and here we have the actual sensor. So when you receive the box, um, you'll be opening it. And when you look inside, you'll have the sensor, which is the tip of the, the it's at the tip of the cable. You also have the absorption system, which is the FAD5 absorption system. This is a junction box. And this is where you bring the end of the cable into and the extension cable out of. Uh, also has a little window for reading the absorption system. Here you have the end of the cable which has all the wiring. Um, and it's in a protective case there. This is the desiccant cartridge which has the yellow-orange uh, color to it um, which helps you read the absorption capacity. Um, that's used to make sure moisture doesn't get into the capillary tube at the end of the cable. And then you have Wago lever nuts, which are used for wiring splicing. And you have the screws for the junction box um, to make sure that it's secured tightly. Next, we're going to go over how to wire up your water level sensor and all of what we're going over is referenced um, in the manual. So this is a, um, a resource to help you visualize all the directions that are already written in the water level sensor manual, installation manual. So the goal is to get the cable that runs from the sensor to the sat water communicator. But before we get the cable to the sat water communicator, we need it to pass it through the absorption system. So first step is to take off the protective covering from the sensor cable. You'll see lots of wiring. Uh, the only wires that we need to be concerned about is the red and blue wire. This will be red is live, the positive, and blue is the negative. You'll also see the capillary tube, which is our reference to atmosphere. And this tube um, has a little cap on it, and we need to remove that cap. Um, so that it can correctly reference atmosphere. This is for when barometric pressure drops um, and makes it takes that into account. So the first step is to pass your um, end of your wire into one of the two cord grips. Once you have your cable through, go ahead and tighten the cord grip down a little bit. So what's going to happen is you're going to connect your red and blue, your positive and negative to an extension cable. So here I have an extension cable. Obviously you want to make sure your extension cable is long enough to reach to wherever your sat water communicator is. I've gone ahead and stripped the end of this uh, extension cable and it conveniently has uh, red and blue wire. Sometimes it might have a different colors but you'll just have to um, verify positive and negative. So go ahead and pass your extension cable through the other cord grip. and tighten down the cord grip. Next we'll take the provided Wago lever nuts and we'll connect the red wires, the positive leads, to each other. And the Wago lever nuts, you just put them in and snap them down. And they are clear so you can see whether your contacts are touching. Check the back, make sure they're snug. Give it a little test pull. Same thing for the blue, open them up, put the leads in, snap them down. And you'll adjust your wire so that it all fits nice and snug in your junction box. And 
and your leads will be connected there. Next you'll take your desiccant cartridge and place it in the foam triangle in the space there. Again this will take all the humidity or uh, moisture in the box and absorb it so that it does not get um, into this capillary tube which is a reference to atmosphere. Once you've placed the screws on your junction box, um, you want to make sure that the window is clear so you can see the desiccant cartridge. Um, and if it's orange, it means dry, which means that the absorption capacity is, has not been maxed out. If it turns white, which is a rare occurrence, uh, this is usually after two or three years of um, operation, that means that the desiccant cartridge needs to be taken out and put in the sun to be dried out and then it can be reused again after it returns to its original color. You want to mount this uh, Fad5 junction box in a place that is protected, usually inside a borehole uh, cover box um, or in a separate enclosure. You have to basically make sure you have enough of your sensor cable to get to your Fad5 and then enough of your extension cable to get to your sat water communicator. The next step is to take your extension cable and get it to your sat water communicator. So here we have a sat water communicator. I've outfitted it with a cord grip for the extension cable. Also a cord grip for your 24 volts DC, which is explained in a, a different video. You'll need a Phillips head screwdriver to open the cover of your sat water communicator. And here you see the, the, the 12 volt battery, which supplies the power to the sensor. Um, so go ahead and pass your extension cable through your cord grip and we'll be landing it on terminal one. So go ahead and pull your cable through, strip the ends and connect it to terminal one. And this concludes attaching the sensor to the communicator. You have your sensor in your borehole or in your water source, you have your sensor cable which is led to your FAD5 junction box, which is spliced to the extension cable, which leads to the sat water communicator. Next, I'll briefly describe and summarize what was discussed in the other power package video. Um, you will need 24 volts DC, or basically between 9.8 volts to 28 volts, but we'll just call it 24 volts um, DC to power your sensor. Um, in order to do that, um, we've brought the uh, 24 volts cable coming from your power junction box, um, which is also supplied by an 80 watt solar panel um, for this exercise, for this example. Um, so you have your two leads coming from your solar panel coming into your power junction box, and then you will connect the positive and the negative to your 24 volts cable which then leads into your sat water communicator and is spliced into your battery cable, your splitter cable, which then goes into the, this red terminal, this 24 volts DC terminal here. So this is basically the, the minimum requirement for 24 volts um, with a battery power backup system. So in summary, as explained in the water level sensor installation manual, you will have two parts to the installation. You'll have the water level sensor installation, which includes the sensor, the FAD5 communicator, and you'll also have the power package installation, which includes your 24 volt DC power source, your power junction box, and your sat water communicator.